Hello friend, welcome to the channel Pharmacy Dictionary. In today's lecture video, we are going to discuss about the other route of drug administration under systemic route like sublingual, buccal and rectal. What is the meaning of systemic route? As we have discussed it in our earlier video, a route which is intended to be absorbed in the blood that is simply known as a systemic route. But do you know how the drug moves from the site of administration to the blood? Yes, these are so many other ways by which the drug moves from the site of administration to the systemic route. So apart from oral, apart from sublingual, apart from buccal, there are so many other routes for which we have to see that condition in upcoming videos. But let's focus on sublingual, buccal and rectal route. First of all, I have to explain about the sublingual. What is the exact meaning of sublingual? That means below the tongue. So whenever we place any tablet containing drug or can say drug containing desirable drug is placed under the tongue that is called sublingual drug. Under the tongue there are secretion of saliva and if you watch or observe the under the tongue portion in mirror you will find different scrap of different networks of capillaries so if the drug will dissolve that particular saliva in that particular saliva the drug will absorb by these capillaries and that capillary will reach to the blood vessels and then only your drug will produce its desirable effect so this is one of the important root of drug administration and it has several advantage and few limitations too so let's see the tongue is very important because below the trunk there is secretion of saliva so that tongue will dissolve that particular drug but if we crush that particular tablet containing drug and place that drug or you can say the place that is chewed or churned drug in beside the cheek that is called buccal root of drug administration so this is not actually oral i have to explain this this is not oral because in case of oral we have to swallow that drug with a water with a glass of water or any other vehicles but in this case of sublingual and buccal you should not drink it you should not swallow it just you have to place it either below the tongue or beside the cheek then their absorption will take place with the help of capillaries available inside that tongue or beside the cheeks this is important difference between buccal and sublingual and oral route of drug administration now coming to their basic advantage that says first of all they bypass the first pass effect and gastric juice this is one of the most important advantage and we have to repeat this in upcoming lecture too what is the meaning of this first pass metabolism we have to understand this first pass metabolism in short so whenever any person take any drug via oral route i am talking about the first pass not about the sublingual and buccal so whenever any patient take tablet or any other doses form via oral route of drug administration that drug will go through the stomach via esophagus after reaching to the stomach that will go for disintegration and dissolution if that doses form is of solid if it is liquid that will completely dissolve itself no need to disintegrate and other process so after disintegration dissolution that will reach to the small intestine and from small intestine they may move to the liver by portal vein so in the liver there will be a process called metabolism and at the sequence or we can say consequence of metabolism that drug may be converted into its inactive metabolite there are so many consequences we will see this under the metabolism topic so in the sequence of inactivation the drug will be of no use or that will not produce as it was intended to produce some kind of effect that means it will not produce 100% or up to that mark of effect so this is called first pass metabolism in case of first pass metabolism the efficacy of drug will be reduced as per expected rule so in that case of oral route there is a limitation but to avoid or to come overcome that particular limitation we should use sublingual route of drug admission in sublingual there will be a bypass because the drug is not going to the intestine there is not going to the stomach and the drug is not going to liver also directly after some time it will go but directly it is not going because directly it is going through the cell through the capillaries to the blood vessels that is the important difference and the second important difference is that is they will not be destroyed by gastric juice in case of oral route of drug administration that drug will go to the stomach and in the stomach there is an acid that's called gastric juice and due to the nature of that particular drug it may be it is not compulsory always but if the drug is acid labile that means if the drug is having property to get destroyed itself in the presence
presence of acid so that drug will not produce this desirable effect because acid has already destroyed that particular drug in case of oral route but here in sublingual and even buccal also the drug is not going to the stomach that is why it will be protected by acid secretion and that will produce a desirable effect because it is moving towards the blood stream directly without going through the stomach this is a major advantage second advantage say stability stability is maintained I mean, even drug which is to be stabilized to produce its action. If the drug is not stable in acid pH, as I have explained you the earlier one, then how will it produce its action? But in case of sublingual and buccal, stability will be maintained because the pH of saliva is almost neutral. Not exactly, but almost neutral as per the different reference of the book. So the pH will be neutral. So this drug will not be destroyed by acid, even though it is not going to the stomach also. Next advantage say may produce immediate pharmacological effect as per the reference of KD Tripathi and P. Jagdish Prasad and many other books they say that will produce immediate pharmacological effect as compared to oral route but not like the, the intravenous route because in case of intravenous route that will produce immediate effect but this case a sublingual route of drug absorption will take little bit higher time as compared to intravenous and laser time as compared to the oral route of drug absorption. So it can say so we can say that it is an intermediate action it will produce intermediate pharmacological effect within a time limit now next one is their limitation as i discussed earlier every drug has its pro and cons so in case of this sublingual buckle there are few limitations we can say I will not say this is a disadvantage, but these are the limitations. First, say only lipid soluble and non irritative drug or agent can be given. Only those drugs which are lipid soluble can be given by this route. There are two types of drugs according to their solubility parameter. First one is water soluble, a second one is lipid soluble or hydrophilic or lipophilic or hydrophobic or lipophilic likewise. So these are same water soluble or lipid soluble. These are the main classification. So only those drugs which are easily soluble in lipid then only they can be absorbed by the capillary. So normal drug will not go through that route of drug administration. So this is important parameter and the second parameter says accordingly limitation of their conditions that non irritating substance are given through this route. If any drug or any tablet which is being taken is causing irritation under the tongue, below the tongue, in the buccal cavity or oral mouth cavity, it may be of no use. It will be a problematic for that particular person who have taken that kind of drug. So this is limitation. That drug should not produce irritation. There should be a neutral condition. Next one, inconvenience. Some can spit or some can swallow the drug. Really, it is very difficult for controlling the purpose. If you will talk about myself it is very difficult to retain the drug under the tongue for a longer time or there is a possibility is that i will suck or i will swallow that particular drug or sometimes it will be gay spitted from my mouth from my mouth so that is the limitation of that particular drug these are basic limitation it is inconvenient for those patients who are unconscious state who are basically of below age group like children that is very difficult for them to do these conditions now next one says their example what are the basic example these are nitroglycerin it is also known as a trinitroglycerin example of anti anginal drug this is very fast effect as compared to oral one next is desamino oxytocin this is also a drug which is given through sublingual route now this was a basic limitation and advantage of sublingual along with buccal. We can combine this two advantage and limitation with the buccal root of root of drug admission also. Now let's about the rectal root. Have you ever applied any drug through rectal root? I am sure the answer will be in no because it is very rare cases when we have to apply the drug or produce the drug or suppository via rectal route because there are so limited drugs which are available to be administered via this route of drug administration. Although it is also having some kind of advantage but there are so many limitations or I must say disadvantage of this rectal route of administration. So let me explain first their basic advantage. The certain drug or certain irritative drug Drug, an unpleasant drug can be given through this route of drug administration. If that drug is causing irritation, that to only limited to the oral route limitation. So then only that drug can be given through rectal route of drug administration. Apart from that, there are other advantages like partially bypass the first pass effect. 
as like the advantage of this sublingual buccal root it will also bypass the first pass metabolism but that not much that means not almost that means partially will be bypass the first pass metabolism and gastric acid degradation that will be protected by this kind of degradation process the next one says ideal if drug is causing vomiting or patient is vomiting if the drug is having property or potency to cause vomiting like very bitter drugs so this drug can be given through rectal root of drug administration or in that case where patient is continuously vomiting in that case also we can give the drug via rectal root of drug administration because that will not cause the vomiting vomiting is caused just by taste only taste bud will be stimulated and the signal goes through the chemoreceptor pancreatic zone and that will induce vomiting but in case of rectal root that is not possible so coming to the next one that is example Di is a palm and paracetamol should give their effect. Basically, if we talk about those drugs which produce their effect via this route of drug administration are paracetamol and diazepam in case of pediatric patient. And the last one, their limitation. There are so many limitations, but I will concise this in a few points. These are inconvenient. Really, it is very inconvenient to introduce this drug, to introduce the suppository via this route of drug administration. This is so, so irritating and embarrassing too. You cannot take help of any other person and that will be very difficult to do it by your own self. So, this is very inconvenient method of drug administration. Then, irregular. The effect of the drug will be not constant for each and every time and for all patients. That effect may be irregular for yourself, even for the others. That is why we cannot completely rely upon their accuracy. The next one is limited. As I said you in earlier, there are few drugs which are available to be administered via this route of drug admission. Like in case of local route, we can say that the which are used for treatment of piles, hemorrhoids and edit other type of infection in case of some animal. So, these were some advantage and some limitation of sublingual, buccal and rectal root of drug administration. And in current scenario, it is very difficult to accept rectal root of drug administration with a special reference to the village or rural area because those person will completely not aware of this suppository. If you give them suppository, that because suppository looks like a soft gelatin capsule sometimes, so they will completely be confused regarding is this drug for oral root or suppositories like vagina or rectal because this is a practical example. I have already seen this condition in some case of medical store. So this is a very, very dangerous limitation because they may take it via oral route by our water they can solve this condition so friend this was a small lecture for today's topic i hope you will get the point very clearly if you have any doubt or any confusion any queries regarding today's lecture please ask your queries in comment box so if you want to take the screenshot of this whiteboard lecture you will have a screenshot after some time i will be get away from this whiteboard so at the last thank you very much for watching this video please do take care of yourself and clear your concept with association pharmacy and pharmacy dictionary as well thank you